Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a uh, video, a quick video on how to uh, upgrade the uh, TP-Link uh, TL-WDR 4300 version 1 router from the stock factory firmware to the DDWRT firmware. So, first thing we need to do is go to the DDWRT website and download the appropriate uh, bins to make this happen. And a bin, by the way, is a firmware file. So it's, uh, let's go to dd-wrt.com. And I'm gonna use the uh, standard uh, router uh, database. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. Uh, there are other firmwares other than the, the the standard uh, stable ones. Uh, you can go to other downloads here and find uh, the beta ones, but I'm not going into that uh, as they're not stable and then are likely to cause issues. So here we're going to go WDR and you know automatically it finds the, uh, all the WDRs and I got the WDR 4300. It is a version 1 uh, make sure you, you, if you're not doing this for your 4300, but for some other device, that you use the correct firmware for your device. Can't stress that enough. Number one. Uh, number two, before attempting this, make sure you're hardwired to your router. In other words, you have a network cable going from your computer or laptop directly to the back of your router into one of the LAN ports, local area network uh, ports. So you want to be hardwired into your router and uh, with a network cable. So let's go get the file. So we're going to go here to TLWDR4300. And as you can see, there's three. The only two you need to actually turn it from factory to DDWRT are first this one, the factory to DDWRT bin, and this one to uh, flash it, the final flash image to complete the whole process. So it's a two-stage uh, uh process and this web revert here it's an RER file so you need WinRAR to take that uh, extract it but that one will turn it back from your DDWRT and I have a, a, a video on that as well but we're this time we're just uh, turning the uh, factory firmware into the DDWRT so let's click on that and download it I'm gonna save it into a special directory I've made for this you can save it wherever you'd like just remember where you've saved it Good idea. Um, so mine's under C drive and 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 uh, TP Link WDR43 folder. So save. It says uh, okay. So yeah, factory bin file. So that's there. And I'm gonna get the other one as well. And which is the web flash. So it's a two stage. You have to first do the first one and then do this one. So save that. It's saved to the same spot. Now, uh, next thing is a uh, network configuration. Um, I've already done it, but just so you know, just go down your network icon or however you want to get to open and open network and sh sharing center. So your network and sharing center. Change your adapter settings. And as you can see, I have a wireless connection in a, in a local area connection. Well, I want to make sure that I only go through that one. So if your uh, wireless network adapter is enabled there's a chance that it'll go try and flash it through wireless do not flash your router through a wireless connection you're just asking for trouble so uh, mine is on I'm just going to disable it to make sure that uh, it does not talk through that as you can see it's now disabled and uh, my local area uh, net uh, connection to network which says network 4 is actually enabled as you can see, because it does, it, you know, basically it's active and it's plugged in. So, enough of that. Next place you need to go to in your in your uh, browser. And I'm using Windows 7 and Internet Explorer. So, in your browser, uh, 192.168.0.1 is the default IP address for the TP Link, and it's asking you for a username and password. The username. Uh, the default username is admin and the default password is admin so just use those if you haven't changed it and there we are now you want to go down to 
the system tools and then it, it, it springs out from there uh, then you want to go to backup and uh, sorry fact firmware upgrade here okay so click on that now if you have a specific configuration you want to save just uh, you can use the backup and restore tab down here to to save that and uh, just in case you, you don't like the DD, DDWRT software and you want to bring it back and restore it quickly that's that's how you do it but anyway we're dealing with a firmware upgrade so we're gonna go here okay firmware upgrade uh, pretty straightforward click on browse uh, go to wherever you download to those two bin files and oh, it looks like I've got them in here and there they are so we want uh, the factory to DDWRT bin first. And then we're going to click upgrade. Sure you want to, oh, you sure you want to upgrade the firmware? Of course. And then it goes through its process. So we'll wait here for a second. Now, I'm going to see if this happens on, on, on this again, but, but for some reason, my router, uh, when I flash my router, I have to reset my cable modem. In other words, uh, power down my cable modem and uh, power it back up again to get uh, an, an automatically get an internet connection. I don't know why that is, but uh, more than likely it's syncing to the uh, MAC address and it's changing or something like that. So we'll see here in a minute whether I have to do that or not. You may have to too. I'm on, I'm with Time Warner and through cable. All right, so we're waiting for the system to reboot here. Restarting. Uh, I'm doing this real time so you know how long it takes just so that uh, when you're doing it, uh, you understand that there is a, a waiting period for this stuff to go through. All right, some patience is required. Okay, I'm going to do the uh, refresh myself. Actually, first thing you need to do is go down here to your network and sharing center. And go to change adapter settings. Let's see if it's changed the IP address, which I suspect it has. Um, your network card should be set to uh, this way. Let's go to, uh, so, sorry if I'm racing ahead. Right click it, go to properties. Then go to uh, Internet Protocol version 4. Make sure that it's set to obtain IP address and a DNS server automatically at that point. Most likely it is by default. Um, let's then right click it again go to status and details yeah it's changed the IP address and you see that your default gateway is now 192.168.1.1 and so on and so forth here what that means is 1.1 uh, 192.168.1.1 is the uh, uh, gateway which means it's where your router is so the flash changed the IP address let's go there .1.1 First thing the DDWRT software does is it forces you to change your username and password. I'm just going to use the um, TP-Link uh, default, which is admin, and the default uh, password, which is admin as well. And you know that this will not stay this way, but I'm just doing it for the sake of this and e to make it easy. Please change your password. Don't use admin, admin. Use something other than that. Okay, so my WAN IP, 
as you can see over here is zero 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 which probably means I got to reset my router so I'll do that right now so reset means reboot shut it down pull the power cord and put it put it back on again and I'm not talking about the router I'm sorry it's my cable modem All right, that started. Let's go to finish this process. Well, you go to administration, it's asking you again. So admin and whatever you set the password to, mine's admin. Okay, there we go. Then go to firmware upgrade. And like I said, this is two two stage process. We need to put the the uh, the web flash bin in next so there it is the web flash bin right where I put it where it's downloaded to so hit OK on that and then click upgrade again I don't know if you can see it but my WAN IP has already changed so uh, yeah for some reason I gotta cycle the power on my cable modem in order for the router to get uh, uh, an IP address from the WAN section of the internet and this is this happens on any router I use so I think it's something to do with the way the way the cable modem handshakes with my router okay so it's going through the process at this point um, what else Okay, at the end of this process, make sure you change your network card here, your network sharing center, um, change adapter settings, make sure you turn your wireless back on, good idea. I'll remind you when we're done anyway. Uh, I find that, that a lot of the time this gets done a lot quicker than what it shows. So I'm just going to go to 192.168.1.1. Yeah, okay, it says rebooting now. And... Let's see. Looks like it's not, it's telling the truth. So wait for the process. It will get you there. Yeah, my, my router's lights all just turned off and are turning back on again. Be patient. Like I said, I'm going to show you this real time as I don't want, um, I want you to understand how long it actually takes. I look down here, I see that my um, network card is re-establishing uh, a connection down here. So that's fine. Okay, so it's established. Let's go. There we go. We're back into the router. Uh, we're now at the correct um build for this firmware which is the 21061 make sure you do both firmware flashes in the right order otherwise this is not going to be very stable or it's not it's not going to be as good as it should be so you have the first um, sorry the first file which is the uh, factory to DDWRT bin then after you've done that successfully you go back and you flash it with the TLWDR 4300 web flash bin okay so that's that process for doing this so uh, once again uh, there it is all fully set up I will have a WAN IP address at this point that's great and um, make sure you go down to open the network and sharing center turn your wireless back on under change adapters and there you go enable and then connect to your router uh, using whatever uh, password or username combination that you need SSID and so on all right that's how you flash the TP-Link TL-WDR 4300 version 1 to the DDWRT software thank you very much for watching and uh, best of luck